You know, guys, there's been a lot of chatter in my family about getting a dog. And look, I get it. I grew up with a dog. It's great. And like you dog owners, I reckon you speak more complimentary about your dogs than most parents talk about their kids. <laughs> like seriously, you say stuff like, oh, it's my fur baby. It's my fur baby. <laughs> I call my kids my flesh pets. And <laughs> not as nice. And the only thing is we live in a built up area. So all the dogs around us, they're small, which is fine, but they're the kind of dogs you know that humans have bred them to just be structurally unsound? <laughs> like, near us, there's a pug, okay? I'm sorry, pugs just shouldn't exist like that. You know, historically, they used to have snouts. They did. We've now bred them to be nostrils straight into skull. <laughs> like, their eyes just pop out like that. No one should have a blind spot. Fucking dare. <laughs> just, oh, you snuck up on me by coming straight at me. That was... <laughs> That is cheeky. <laughs> like, like this poor thing, it struggles to breathe. I feel so sorry for it. It jumps up on your lap and it's like <laughs> <laughs> And the owner's like, oh, I think Toby likes you. I'm just thinking, yeah, well, if Toby was a car to be unroadworthy. Well, it's not <laughs> right. And my family want a toy poodle, and I'm sorry, it, it, that's not right. It's not right. Like, we all know now in the 21st century, Poodles, they will shag anything, won't they? Like, everything's half a poodle. Just a labradoodle, cavoodle. That's my pit baloodle. All right. Yeah, it doesn't molt while it's ripping out your jugular. OK, it's not. But toy poodles, break it down. Think about the inception of that. Yeah, which means you had to get a normal-sized poodle, and then you bred it with the runt of the litter, and so to make sure that their offspring were small, which means initially you had to find a dog that was attracted to sleeping with other dogs that look like puppies. <laughs> yeah, that's a pedophoodle. <laughs> you weren't sure if you were gonna clap that, were you? <laughs> Fair enough. But I'm not gonna buy a dog. I mean, I'm not gonna buy anything right now, thanks to the rising cost of living crisis. And think about how heartbreaking that sentence is the rising cost of living. Like, not anything in particular, just life. <laughs> hey, I've been thinking about living. Yeah, we've crunched the numbers and I don't know if it's for you, so. <laughs> well, there's not many options, is there? Because <laughs> funerals are too expensive. So it really is <laughs> painting us into a corner. But, because I was at the doctor's recently, just with some stress-related health issues, and he went through a litany of what I'm up to. He said, do you exercise? And I said, look, I tried, but it's hard to get into a routine. And he said, well, at least you try. Because his words, we sit down too much as a society now, and that is leading to a sedentary lifestyle, and that is shortening our lives. And I heard that, and I thought to myself, if that is the case, I hope there's not an afterlife, because I do not want to be trading stories with people from other generations about what did them in, because I'd feel slightly sheepish about that one. <laughs> you know, you're in wherever you land, you're talking to a guy, found out he fought in the Great War, World War I, defended this country, yeah? And he died in the trenches as the entire platoon was decimated as everyone was taken out by the Turks. And then he says, oh, sorry, mate, uh, so how did it all end for you? <laughs> Comfy chairs, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like recliners, uh, bean bags, they were hard to get out of. <laughs> And footstools, you know? So I guess you could say the Ottomans did us both in. <laughs> That's the greatest joke I've ever written!